Hi there, I'm Stuart Smith, designer of the SG Lagtastic, and I'm going to explain to you what these pieces are for and how to attach this to your golf club. So we have the actual Lagtastic bar here, which this will be inserted into the top of your club, and then I'll show you how to bend it around your body. And these two ties are just to secure it to the top of the club to make sure it doesn't twist. Now the idea of this training aid, hence the name the Lagtastic, is to pretty much improve your lag. So lag is needed for strike, to help with power, to help with, with short game, it's to help with all parts. What this will also do, this will help transform your extension. So when you watch tour pros, after they've hit the ball, the extension is going down the line towards the target. The only way you can use this successfully is to create that kind of extension. So it's really gonna see a massive improvement in your swing. I'm just going to grab a club and I'll show you how to attach this to the golf club. Okay, so I've got my lag taxi, I've got my club and I've got my tie. So what we're going to do first of all, we're going to push this metal piece into the top hole in your golf grip. So first of all, I'm just going to untie a little bit of the Velcro so you can see that. Now I'm going to push it in. So there we go, so as you can see, that's gone all, all the way down and it's onto the grip. Pull this back down and securely tie up the Velcro. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this first tie first of all. So I'll put my thumb on there, put it round so it's nice and tight, there we go. So if you were doing the chipping on the bunkers, you might get away with just using that one. This one here, certainly for full swing and pitching, but I prefer to put this on for all of them just to secure it. Then what you do, if you feel the, the top of the club here, you can feel where the foam joins the grip. So what we're looking to do is to have this 50% on the grip, 50% on the foam. And again, thumb there, wrap it round so it's nice and tight. So there you, you can see I've got the two ties on there and it's securely so it's not gonna twist when we start to use it. That's how you attach the lag test it to the club properly. Okay, so we've now got the lag test it securely fastened to the top of the club. Let's show you how to bend it into the right position for you. So we grab a ball, and if I was to hold the club and try to dress the ball, as you can see, this gets in the way a bit. We've got to bend it around our body. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna securely grab the top part of the grip and the bottom part of the foam, and all I'm gonna do is just push the lag test it over a bit. See that? So you see I've bent it. So now when I dress the ball, can you see how that goes to the side of me? Now, this one is still touching me a tiny bit, so I'm gonna hold it there and just bend it over a little bit more. Okay, good. So now you can see that that is now going to the side of, of me, but here I need to bend this part up to the side. So hold my hand there, I'm going to tread on the club, and then we just bend it round. There we go, there we go. So as you can see, this now goes around me perfectly. So this is now fitted to my body. Okay, so again, so we're looking for it to come out straight a tiny bit. Then you bend it to the side, and then you have a look at where it comes past you, and then we want to bend it in. The closer you can get it to at this stage, the better it's going to be when you come to use the club. Okay, so there you go, that was a successful shot, and the lag test it missed me. So let's explain what we're looking to to do here. So the, the whole point of this is to create more lag coming into impact and also through impact. So if we come down and we allow the club head to overtake our hands too early, which is what most golfers do, therefore they lose the lag, the actual lag tastic will hit my side. Can you see that? So as I come in, it hits my side. So what we need to do, as we come down, you've got to use your hips to rotate. As they do, you pull your hands and arms through. So you can see how far the lag test it is from my side. Then once we come to here, we're gonna to learn to release the club slightly differently. We want the lag test it to now come this side of you. Because if I was to get into this position here, which is great, and then flick, 
it still hits me. So we're looking, I'll do it in slow motion for you. So as we come down, rotate our hips, drive our hands, hit it, and then release the club at this angle. So if I come around to this side, you can see here, as I go back, again, I come down, rotate my hips, and then what you see on the tour pro swings on the tellies, after they've hit the ball, the club head remains outside their hands, which is the position the lagtastic will create. If we come down and we scoop or flick here, see how the golf club wants to go left and out of view. That's not what you're looking for. So we're going back, we're coming down, you rotate, you get the hands through and you hinge it to get the lag tacit to come the other side of, of you. That helps to give you the lag coming into and at impact and help give you the correct extension out of impact, which is vital for power, strike and control. Okay, so when you use this, there's two ways you can use this. You can use this for swinging at home with no ball, and then you can also use this on the practice ground or at home with airflow balls or, or down the drive range with golf balls. But they're gonna be slightly different. So when there is no golf ball there, you want to try to learn to swing this as quickly as possible without this hitting you. So if I just do some swings and I go back, see how quick I'm able to do it? Again, let's go back. So that's gonna really train all the correct movements at speed. Now, until you've used this for a while, you'll fail to hit a golf ball at that kind of speed. So what I suggest you do is when you're on the golf ball, we just look at doing little half swings, first of all, and then you can gradually build up the, the speed and the length of swing. So let's go back, so watch this, back, through, and there you go, so you can see I've hit it, the lag test it was nowhere near me, and as I get better and more confident with this on a golf ball, I would look to build up the length of swing and also the speed. But make sure you do combine hitting golf balls with swinging at home, because the more you do at home at speed, the quicker you'll be able to do it at speed when there's a golf ball there. Okay, so successful pitch, nice flight, even generated a little bit of spin when that one went into the green. So what we're looking for on the pitch, or what more importantly you should understand is what goes wrong, is that golfers tend to believe that a pitch shot, the ball goes right up in the air, lands and, and stops. And therefore, I see golfers constantly trying to flick the ball up. And as you can see, if we flick, you lose your lag, which means you lose your power and, and your strike. And also, so you can see the lag tacit is going to hit you in the side. So what we're looking to do, we're looking to have a nice simple movement where you use your body a lot more than what you think. So your shoulder's going to go back, and as you rotate your hips, you allow the hands and arms to come through ahead of the club head, making sure the lag tacit miss you. But with pitching, you want to feel you are ending with a great extension here. If everything collapses and comes round, then you lose the good work you've put into the backswing. So if we come from here, you can see my weight's favouring the left-hand side. I just go back and through, and I've ended with a fairly good extension. Let's grab another ball. So let's set it up again. I'm over to here. Don't go mad. There we go, so look at the extension. Everything is still going towards the target. That's very, very important for good pitching. That's a bit of luck. Let's talk about how this can really transform your chipping. 
So chipping, let's look at where golfers go wrong with chipping and pretty much it's the fact that again you're trying to lift the ball and the club head overtakes the hands way too early. So what I see quite often is that when a golfer comes in to chip they go and as you can see the lag tastic is hitting me. So if I was to try to hit a ball like that you see how we managed to get it airborne but we hit the ground a long way back and it's nowhere near the hole. The other thing I will say about chipping as well is that really good chipping you actually do use your lower half force. If I was to do my movement as you can see I'll go back and then watch this. See how my lower half just rotates and as it rotates it allows me to get the lag tastic past me as well. So for a chip shot we're not looking to have a release or anything big onto it we're just looking to make sure the lag tacit doesn't hit my side if it doesn't hit my side that means I've probably got lag at impact so that's where the hands are ahead of the, the ball if it does hit my side that means I've lost it so what we're looking to do as I say is just go back see how I just rotate and as you can see if I do it in slow motion my hands come through first let's see if we can hit another chip so come into here nice and easy back through and as you can see look at the gap I've got here so my hands have moved it's not just a case of going and flicking or trying to lift everything up by striking into the ball correctly at the right angles so the hands come through first you're going to get a lovely chip Okay, so bunkers and the lagtastic. You're gonna love using this in a bunker. Okay, so you're probably wondering how can a lag aid help in a bunker? Well, three reasons why bunker shots go wrong. You hit the ball, so don't hit the ball. You don't follow through, make sure you follow through. On the third one, which is the most common, is that you actually hit the sand way too far back. So, by hitting the sand way too far back normally means we've lost lag. So, as we come down, we do the shot and if the club head comes down too early, we hit the sand here, which then means it either comes out and hits the ball into the bank or there's no power and therefore the ball won't lift out of the bunker. What we're looking to do, we've got the lag tash again set up as normal. You come to a nice backswing position and then you need an excellent rotation of the hips for good bunker play so we rotate and as we rotate we hold this angle the whole time that holds the club face off gives us plenty of loft to get it up and out of those steep bunkers and by creating the lag we are not going to hit the sand too early okay so let's ha have a go the shuffling you see i've got the lag tastic to the side of me nice and easy back through so you can see I've rotated and the ball's come out nicely on to the green. Let's have a go at doing it wrong. So we're coming to the bunker and this time I'll lose my lag. So you can see that that whacked into my side and the ball's not come out anywhere. So let's put it back, let's have one more go. So remember we're gonna rotate and hold this lag angle the whole time. Back through. And you can see the ball's out of the bunker. Easy. Hi, I'm Owen. I'm a member of Fetford Golf Club. I've been using the SG Lagtastic now for several weeks. When I started using it, I was playing off four, uh, and I'm now off 2.6, and I feel like I'm shooting better scores. Um, the main benefit for me is my impact position when using the SG Lagtastic, especially on irons. I feel as I'm getting into a much stronger position and getting better ball striking, and overall, my game's improved a lot.